Hey, and welcome back to Berlin Libre Flip. My name is Eon, this is episode 24 of Berlin Libre Flip, and we are finally back in the workshop. After two long weeks without a single scene in the workshop, I'm back back here, and I'm not alone, I brought Space Cookie, and Space Cookie is the software developer behind uh, Libre Flip, and she takes care of all of the image processing, and the cameras, and did I say software stuff? So I think what we are about to do today, she just said it's called an integration test because I want to see if all the components and modules work together as intended or as I hoped. Um, okay, let's get this thing open and uh, check the wiring. I want to check the wiring together with her one last time and then we're going to power it up and see if that stuff actually works or if it's all a fail. I don't know how often you've seen this theme, but this is the, I don't know, 10th, 15th... This is it! So, let's see whether this actually has a chance to work. So, we have a USB 3 hub in here and it's powered by this PSU and that all is plugged in, yes. The Odroid is powered with this block and it's plugged in and should be powered. So, there's the Odroid. And the Odroid has, this is the USB 3 plug of the Odroid, and one of those gray cables goes to the camera, this one. And the other cable goes to the USB 3 hub. And the USB 3 hub then has the other camera, and the plug on top, and the Arduino. And there is a third USB on the Odroid, which connects to the touchscreen. The HDMI is connected to the touchscreen and network is connected to the network plug over here. We should keep it open and uh, see if this actually works. Oh, and then there is also a special moment. Because if we set the screen operational, then that would be reason enough to finally pull off this foil. But let's wait, let's wait. Not, not now, not now. Later in the episode. If I now switch this button, the machine should boot. And I mean, I have to say, I haven't booted the Odroid in months. I, when I got it, I assembled it once on the bench, see, uh, saw that everything worked, and then I took it apart again to mount it later. And after all the wiring, I never bothered to boot it without um, proper um, consultancy present. And now I'll try that for the very first time. Either this thing will boot, or you're going to see some magic smoke and a very panicky Eon. Okay. Uh, that's the fire extinguisher. Over there, over there. Okay, good. So, uh, three, two, one, here goes nothing. Whoa, the screen does stuff. Ooh. Let me show you. This looks like it's booting. I mean, the screen is the wrong way around, but that should be simple to fix in the future. Yep, that's a Ubuntu. Nice. You know what? The moment has come, Space Cookie. The moment has come. I'm not going to stall you or bother all of you OCD people any longer with this piece of plastic and finally pull it off. Whoa, that looks so nice. That looks so nice. Great. Can we now Google the password? <laughs> the default password of an Odroid? I have no clue what it is. I think it might be Odroid. Okay, let's see. Is there a, an on-screen keyboard? Uh, on -screen keyboard. Whoa! Damn it! This is gonna take a while. Damn it! This is so cool. Libreflip has power, and the computer is working. It was Odroid. You're such a hacker. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Let's see if we can turn this display around. That would be amazing. Yes. Okay. The drop down for this thing isn't like it's not giving me the option to have any other orientation than normal. So I guess we'll need to Google. Isn't that just a config and X? Yes, but I don't know that by heart. Let's just do this in the terminal. You mean rotate the screen? Uh, yes. 
Oh, uh, in the terminal, you see. Yes. <laughs> and the touch screen. Yes. Would you like to use the keyboard? Yes, please. <laughs> Good. And this is also an opportunity to test the other plug over here. Oh, yeah. Mm. I completely forgot about that. It was too obvious. Oh, it works. It's not letting me rotate the screen. It's saying output HDMI 1 cannot use rotation. Left reflection none. I have to admit, this is the first time in my life I've ever tried to rotate a screen. Wait, didn't you say it's all HTML and the browser and stuff? Uh, yes. Great. So we can rotate it by CSS? <laughs> no, you can't leave now. I mean, that's, isn't that a viable solution? Um, let me try one more thing. Um, <laughs> I, I guess we could do it in, in CSS. But I would rather not go down that slippery slope this early. <laughs> Through the power of video editing, we found out that rotating the screen on the Odroid is actually pretty complicated on the HDMI output. So we've decided to rotate the website in CSS instead. Um, and uh, we're currently installing the toolchain to build the Rust software on the Odroid. So you're saying slippery slope it is? Yes. And so <laughs> it begins. And what are you doing right now? So right now I'm waiting for it to download the Rust compiler um, to then compile the software. Because I couldn't get the uh, software to cross-compile to ARM on Travis. Because Travis. Okay. So just so you know, all the metal that's used on the machine is stainless? And when she's talking about Rust, she's talking about the programming language. It's also a video game, and on the Rust subreddit, uh, about every four weeks or so, someone asks game-related questions and is very confused by the replies. Great. Um, and aren't you also part of the uh, Rust community and developing it? Oh, yes, I am part of the Rust community team. Oh, great. That's I, awesome. So I, real professionals on the job. I wore the right t-shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put the lenses in. I'm now in the Seabase library, and this is uh, quite an important task because I'm about to pick the book for the very first test picture of LibreFlip. So uh, let's see what, what we got. Let's use something about C or C++. Let's put the book in. I think this is ironic. I thought so much. I, I actually have the uh, Rust programming book at home, like as a dead tree, but I forgot it. Right. The fact that this the text is off screen is my amazing CSS skills. Okay. Uh, but otherwise. Whoa! So these are actually camera images of LibreFlip. Yes. Yes. Which are horribly blurry. Yes, very much so. Okay. Okay. Amazing. Let's, let's try to make them less blurry, I guess. Let's make them less blurry. And, and maybe you can take an image with the actual book in? Or am I seeing them with the, with the book in? I don't know. Let's, let's try. It's not going to work now because it's on camera. But So now we have a book. And what can be hinted at is a book. Let's see. Wow, that is so amazing. So I guess, so what is what? Uh, wait, can we tell from what we see on here? Uh, the top one is what in the code is labeled as left. Oh, let's, okay. Right now, the bottom think... one is the left page, but the right camera. As you can see, like, look, this, this, like, there is some... Yep. Let's try to focus. Okay. Focus, goddammit. See, there is something, but I mean, the page is blurry in itself, so yes, uh, yes, I can't really focus on that. And that is supposedly the that thing there. Yeah, I think so. And on the other page, like, we don't have anything like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, and therefore, the bottom image on this screen must be the right camera in the machine and the left page. Okay. Correct. It would make a lot of sense if you could label them in the future odd and even. Because the odd page is always on the right. Is it? Yes. Really? Yes. 
I'm going to go home now and look into all my books. Do so, but the odd page is like... I haven't found the exception yet. Okay, I will try to find the exception to break this system. Okay, but I mean, labeling them odd and even is kind of the convention in the Buscana community. Sure, yeah. So left is... So right now, the right camera, the one that provides the sharper picture, is uh, the... Wait, let's check. Uh, that's the even camera. Even. Okay, so then the other one is a little odd. Wait, this is before all the paint jobs. Okay. Ah, brilliant. Okay, that should help. Let's focus the cameras. I hope you can see a bit on the screen. Yeah, I mean, I'll show you the result later on. I'll, like, uh, take one of the pictures and put it in the video. Like, the light conditions for the cameras are definitely bad right now. Okay, yeah. But I think that's, like, already the same quality in focus. Let's look at the big pictures now. Looking at the big picture. Well, so fuck that's, yeah. That's odd. And that's even. Fuck yeah. Even is a little better than odd. If you look up here. Even is better. Like, especially if you yeah. look at this text here. Yeah. So this one is a lot clearer. I'm so happy right now. This is a big milestone. Amazing. But I think we can leave it at that. Because I'm, I'm, I'll take, take apart the thing for painting anyway. And I have to do the calibration afterwards. Anyway, and until then, I won't scan a full book, so okay. um, yep. we can definitely work with that and test with that. So you might have recognized that I haven't fiddled with the camera holders yet and adjusted the image perfectly, which I'm theoretically able to do through the way I designed them as a tripod kind of kind of design. Um, I will do that in a later episode or after painting as well, because what we have right now seems to be working actually, which is really great. Like, seems to be working to produce test data that one could use to continue the, the development. The next big challenge is the page turning. So, um, and actually the page turning depends right now on the moving of the suction box. And right now that doesn't really work uh, as I've explained in episode 20, because uh, the choice to use these rubber springs, these in the back here, was a bad one. I shouldn't have made that decision. And uh, so I need to change this part completely out and put a counterweight in this small and confined space over here. Let me show that to you. In this small confined space here, the counterweight will go and will move in here. And I have been busy designing and drawing that, which is one of the reasons why there wasn't a workshop episode uh, the last two weeks. And this part has to be redesigned as well. I've done that by now already. And I just need the second uh, second pulley uh, up here to design. And then I need to print and order two more of these rods. But I still have enough bearings, like those linear bearings I've used in other places as well. Thanks for watching. This was, I think, an amazing success. No magic smoke whatsoever. Space Cookie got the machine to work, although it was a bit painful. A little. <laughs> so what, what did you do? It was normal amounts of painful. Okay, we, you did a lot of stuff off camera. Yes, yeah. So what happened? So um, primarily the problem is rotating the screen. Um, that isn't really possible. Um, then there might be a solution for that, but um, we'll see. Um, also, there was an issue with the cameras where if I told them to take a picture, I would have to tell them to take two and then it would produce one, which is weird and not something I have encountered before with that driver, so I'll have to do some digging. You want to contact the maintainer and see what yes, happens? Yes, yes, I'm going to contact the maintainer and see what might be the cause of that. Great, but we had uh, focus pictures, the cameras and the Odroid and the touchscreen and everything works nicely, and I couldn't be happier. Finally, there is an episode without a fail in the title uh, for a long time. Are you sure? I always put the fail in the title if <laughs> a fail happens. You know, click creating and stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, thanks for watching, and if you just made your way into the series, this is just one episode of a longer series, where I show all the steps how to make the page journey push scanner legal flip. Um, if you would love to see more about this, I'm publishing weekly episodes, at least I try to, 
Uh, and um, yeah, check it out next Thursday.